Hi guys and welcome to part one of a series of videos I'm going to do uh, involving providing power for whatever save you're doing on Tech It games. So that's Tech It with a new Technic pack. Um, so basically this is the most basic of all the setups and it runs on what most people probably start off with which is charcoal power or coal power which is essentially you know taking wood turning it into charcoal and then using that in a steam dynamo to provide power for your machines so as you can see here I do have a tree farm set up here to start off with now this uh, tree farm is let me see it's eight in both those that's eight uh, 17 by 17 now you will notice that I've capped off the top of this tree farm. This uh, cap here has got a gap between the top and the bottom of one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's got a six gap there. Now this does prevent the trees from growing very high. It does limit um, them growing a little bit. But one of the reasons I do this is that personally, this is my own preference, is that of a big tree farm like this is when you get huge, uh, the, the, the big branching out trees growing, it becomes a real hindrance to the actual harvester that you're going to use in this and I find it's much more efficient just to use a system where it just is only harvesting very small trees every time so let me take you through the basic setup of this so the essence of being able to farm these uh, trees is that we've got in here we've got a planter this planter is just filled with saplings and it would normally plant in an area of three by three above it because these extend out eight in every direction, and obviously this is in the center of this, we need to use an upgrade. So I've used a gold upgrade here with a radius increase of seven. What happens is um, as this as the trees above this are harvested and the sapling sort of disappears, obviously, because when it grows and it's harvested, this just replants it in that area. And in the same uh, light there, you know, sort of this here is the harvester and this would also harvest a three by three area in front of it because it's placed in the center we then use another radius increase of seven um, and so these are now set up to just basically harvest and plant from here what these tubes do is they put out all the resources from the harvester the tube going into the planter here oh didn't mean to do that as you'll notice it's set up with a whitelist so only oak saplings can go back into there and it's also set up here with a vacuum mode on it and that just means that that takes priority over the other junction here so any saplings that come out will first of all try and go into the harvester everything here is now drawn down into these deep storage units at the back of here they're all whitelisted as well so this is whitelisted for apples like this for saplings, oak wood, and charcoal there. Now obviously we'll be getting charcoal pulled off up here. Now we've also got a redstone furnace set up here. Once again, this is whitelisted to only take in oak wood from the back, and here it's just set up with just to automatically just pull out anything that comes out. And on this steam dynamo, we also have it whitelisted for charcoal. And we've got an aqueous accumulator back there which just provides water to it. Which do need water for these steam dynamos. So the essential setup is all of the items come down here. We've got a vacuum set up here. So any wood that could go into this redstone furnace is automatically drawn from here rather than going to deep storage unit. Um, didn't pronounce storage very well there, did I? Deep storage unit. Now, um, and then anything coming out of the redstone furnace, which will only be charcoal, We've got a vacuum on here, so the first thing it will try and do is go into the steam dynamo. If it can't go into there, then it will go back towards the deep storage unit. Both of these deep storage units also have just automatically to pull out anything in there. Something very important here is you need to know at least stack size here. You can set the size of stacks that are pulled out. I only ever set it to one. The reason for this is that these deep storage units will just continue to pump out the items. And potentially you can could end up with so many items in a tube that it gets sort of blocked up so you really only want one of those items in there because that will mean that say for example we've got a stack sitting here of wood or an item sitting here of wood too many of them 
well this will constantly be burning through the wood so it will gradually clear that and make space whereas if you've got a stack of 64 we well, would have to wait for the whole 64 to be done um, now you will notice that basically these will just be constantly putting out items but they'll be trying to go into here they'll be trying to go into the steam dynamo and then they'll just get they'll just get pumped straight back into here and um, that just means that you, you just constantly have items available in the tubes um, and that really is the essence of it so you know the harvester cuts down the trees sends saplings back to the planter if there's excess saplings it goes down into this deep storage unit the apples are put into this one uh, you have to make sure you have somewhere for the apples to go otherwise they will clog up the tubes the wood comes down tries to get into the, go straight into the redstone furnace if it can that gets turned to charcoal and tries to go into the steam dynamo any excess of anything goes into these and they're constantly pulled out and tried to be pumped into wherever they can go so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw in five charcoal into here and we will watch it starting so as you can see it's starting to pump out energy this will now start harvesting uh, it's probably harvesting somewhere at the back now it will be going slow at first because it won't have a huge amount of energy built up um, you know it is running off all the energy trying to go everywhere else but as you can see it's gradually starting to cut the leaves and you can hear the occasional thunk of it cutting wood as you can see there's a couple of the logs being cut and if we now look here you'll see it they're starting to be drawn out any saplings are going uh, straight out to the planter if they're able to and now they're getting drawn into the back of the redstone furnace and this is pumping out charcoal straight into our steam diner and as you can see already it's creating a huge excess there so that is really how this works and you could just leave this and go these deep storage units can hold ridiculous amounts of stuff so even if you have an excess of something they will keep going now obviously one steam dynamo is not going to run everything but you can very quickly and very easily upgrade this whole process to have a couple of redstone furnaces multiple of these steam dynamos and it will run and it will provide well over enough energy you know the, the only real drawback to this is that you to get more power you really need to double up on the amount of steam dynamos you have you know the fuel needs to be constantly going you need a nice big farm to it so it's, you know it's it's really quite um, space spatially it's not very efficient but when it comes to actually just being very very reliable this is a nice setup to start with so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly extend this a little bit to maybe a bigger power setup something where you might actually want to run maybe a base or a house off of it with loads of machines on it and I'll sort of show you that it it can work quite nicely in that way so I'm going to quickly set that up and I'll bring the video back in there okay guys so now I've set up a sort of uh, the the more power generating setup that you might want here as you can see I've added a second redstone furnace into there and this is set up exactly the same as the first wood can only go into the into it it just pulls out charcoal and because it's on this same junction here it sort of follows the same uh, vacuum rules there and what I've done here is I've added three more steam dynamos this aqueous accumulator will easily provide for all of those and each of these junctions here are also set to whitelist as you can see so they only basically let in um, the charcoal into the steam dynamos now this one here should be pretty, getting pretty much full and we should start seeing that it will start going into this one here and you can also see how you know the items do sort of they are constantly moving around you know you could make this so that they're not going back and forth in the same pipe and things like that to be perfectly honest I I find that that takes so much more piping to do and I'm personally very happy to just have you know items going back and forth as long as everything's doing what it should and as you can see now we're starting to get items going into the second steam dynamo you'll also notice that this harvester is starting to go a lot faster as it's getting more and more energy it's going so much faster now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this go for another five minutes or so um, and you'll be able to see 
that this easily provides for all of these steam dynamos um, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to show you is this is something that will take balancing depending on the size of the farm you've got so you might want to have a lever on the redstone furnaces that just means that say for example you wanted more wood rather than converting it all to charcoal you could turn off one redstone furnace and you'd start getting more wood because as you can see here we're not getting a huge amount of oak wood in there at the moment if we were to turn one of these off we would start seeing our supplies going up but anyway what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this go for five minutes um, and uh, you can see the result. Okay guys, so as you can see uh, we have now got enough charcoal going into each of these steam dynamos. Let's see how many we've got. 64 in this one, 64, 64 and this one. Just, I think it's only just gone to 64. I've turned off one of our redstone furnaces. So it's just sitting in there of oak wood. You know, if we ever needed a huge injection of charcoal we could just turn that back on. But at the moment I wanted to start seeing a sort of the wood stockpile starting to go up um, and we would also see that this harvester now with all this energy going into it is going much much faster uh, it should come towards these front trees fairly shortly uh, come on there we go so as you can see that is going incredibly quickly now and as you can also see even with this sort of restricted setup these trees are growing very very fast um, you know, in the space of that, you see one, two trees are grown there. I think it's a third one at the back. So a size like this, you would easily get that. Um, there is actually ways you can optimize the trees that grow in an area, but growing it in a chunk. That's something you might want to read up on. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still the case. Uh, when I first ever started playing mammoth tree farms, it depended on the chunk that you were in and, you know, Minecraft tries to grow a tree in a trunk if it can, so in a, in a trunk, in a chunk if it can. So, you know, sort of try and have your tree take your tree farm taken up an entire chunk. So, one tree would always be trying to be grown, basically. Um, so, as you can see, yeah, this is a fairly good, uh, reliable setup. If you're fairly new to Tech It and you may be looking at your first setup you want to go by, you're getting a little bit annoyed at having to go back and put in. Um, items into your generators this is a nice thing you just leave it and go you know if you use these deep storage units they you're never going to really have a problem with going over too much um, and if you just put this as you can see it's pumping out a lot of power you could easily run pretty much most machines off this fairly easily um, so yeah so maybe if you're new to tech it that might be useful to you or maybe if you know you're experiencing tech it and just looking at different things you can do this might have uh, given you ideas and you yeah, I hope you find it useful and I hope you use this uh, to good effect if you decide to and the next two videos are going to be slightly more complex ones one is going to be based around biofuel and I'm going to throw a, a bit of computer uh, not computer craft um, <laughs> A bit of applied energetics in there and uh, the other one is going to be nuclear based using a mining laser and you're going to set that to sort of get more nuclear fuel and that's that's probably going to put out the most energy for the amount of space that you use for it anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope it's become useful um, I might do actually a tutorial on setting this all up, like building everything and setting it up if anyone's having problems with that. Have fun.